Okay, so we're going to talk about acne today. Um, the way you're going to use this presentation is that you should pause it to take the notes and then you should unpause it and listen to my description as you would in class. So pause, write down the notes, and when you're done, unpause and I'll be talking to you. So acne is an inflammatory disorder of the sebaceous glands, which you can see right here, a toast associate. I don't know if you get to see my mouse, but it's attached to the hair follicle. Generally speaking, you make sebum from your sebaceous glands, which is just oil, and it is there to lubricate your hair and skin. Um, and it is you know, totally normal and without effect. And normally it rises up to the pore where the hair exits the um, skin and out and becomes like the hair shaft. And that is, it, normally it also washes out dead keratinocytes from the uh, hair follicle. And that just sort of it stays on your skin surface, you wash your skin, you exfoliate, it, and exfoliating doesn't have to mean scrubbing, it could be your skin um, rubs against your clothing and it just sort of, you know, falls away. So that's what happens normally. In acne, what happens is that hormones will cause an increase in oil production, um, your body is just working this out when you hit puberty, which is why um, acne is a disease that is primarily of adolescence. However, there is also adult acne, which is, you know, even more frustrating perhaps because you feel like you should have outgrown that. Um, so what happens is that hormones, and it also happens with changes in hormones like pregnancy, um, so hormones cause an increase in oil production and that also the oil is going to make the keratinocytes become sticky. As you can see in the first part of this figure, that will, the sticky keratinocytes stick and the oil stick to the hair and block the movement of other ker dead keratinocytes and additional oil out of the follicle and that is going to cause problems it is either going to fill up the follicle with pus um, really what you're seeing like a whitehead which was mostly oil and dead keratinocytes if that happens too much and pressure builds up it can cause um, rupture into the dermis which you can see here with the immune cells in number two of the figure and then if it really happens chronically which means over time you can end up with um, tracts between the follicles, which means that you have an underlying infection, and so this would be like a bigger lesion, uh, because now you have bacteria in there and it is an actual infection. So we're going to talk about the different types of acne, so go ahead and write these ones down. White heads and black heads are called comedones, um, and a white head would be a closed comedone, meaning that there is um, part of the epidermis remains on top of it, and so it holds the built-up oil and um, dead keratinocytes inside the skin, and it can't come out, and so it forms a little thing of pus, which is a whitehead. And then a blackhead is open, um, but it's still not coming out because it's sticky, and so an open comedone or a blackhead, the is exposed to air and that air causes oxidation of the oil in skin cells and therefore it turns black or brown or you know, darker in color. Um, and that's called an open comedone. None of those have inflammation of the dermis and so therefore is, are considered a non-inflammatory acne. Inflammatory acne is a different situation. Go ahead and write those down. So there's a difference between pustules and papules. Papules are going to not have a whitehead on them. Pustules are like a whitehead. They could be bigger. 
um, but they are certainly going to be redder and more inflamed. Um, and inflammation has a couple different components to it. It is redness, heat, um, pain, and swelling. So those are the four hallmarks of, the, of inflammation. Um, and so to a greater or lesser extent, a pustule is like a whitehead, but with it has moved into the dermis, and so you're going to have um, inflammation and pain, redness, heat, swelling. Um, a papule has all that, but it does not have that um, white head, like it doesn't have any pus inside of it. Um, neither of these are things that you should mess around with, like pop or tr pick at in any way because, and I'm sure you've heard that, because they have bacteria inside of them and first of all, a papule, all you're going to do is make it hurt more and more irritated. So that's like a non-starter. Um, a pustule, everything inside there is like a big bacterial culture that you know is something that likes to live in your skin. And therefore, probably you should, if you go to your, you know, picking at that or popping it, now you've just popped the bacterial culture onto your skin where it can split, spread to other places. Um, if you did do something like that, you would want to make sure that you were making sure that you were really washing your hands like after doing it and not like picking what at one part of your skin and then picking at another part of your skin because that is how you are going to spread it from one place to another, which is sort of counter what you're trying to do. All right, so two other types of way more severe inflammatory acne are cystic acne and nodular acne. There is not necessarily a huge difference between those, and sometimes you, they, like clinicians will um, sort of shorthand it to cystonodular uh, acne, which is like combining the two together, where cysts are going to have um, pus inside of them but and nodules are not however it's hard to tell mm -hmm. the difference from the surface because they aren't really that close to the surface and they are um, but they're and they're going to start in the dermis they are going to be painful they are going to be bigger and if you've ever had one of these, it really does feel like it's starting like deep, deep, deep into your skin. Um, these are both things that, so the previous four pustules, papules, whiteheads, blackheads, are things you can treat with over-the-counter medication at home. Cysts and nodules are really things that you need to have treated by a professional. Um, so you don't want to do this on your own. Um, there are prescription medications for that. All right, so let's go through some treatments that you can use at home. Um, so the first thing is, feels a little counterintuitive. It's to avoid astringents or harsh cleansers. Um, and so that's things, so you're like, okay, but I need to remove the oil from my skin because oil is causing this. Well, if the oil is on your skin, if your skin feels oily, um, it means that your make it means that that's that oil has already got made its way out onto your skin and so that's the oil on your skin is not the problem it's the oil that gets stuck inside your skin um and if you strip that oil away your body's natural reaction is to make more of that oil so anything that has an alcohol in it um or leaves your skin feeling like dry and itchy is probably the wrong step gentle cleansers i know that that feels counterintuitive mm -hmm. that you just want to like scrape all that skin, scrape all that oil off. Um, but that's not the thing. If your body will settle down eventually making that oil, um, and you just have to give that part a little bit of time. All right. So retinoids, um, are topical cleansers that are topical creams. Um, Differin is the sort of best well known of these. Um, and the, uh, it's a powerful vitamin, I believe it's vitamin A, um, you use it and it makes your skin, uh, the, 
the cells, the keratinocytes, less sticky and can also decrease inflammation. However, it does create irritation. Um, it's sort of a something that you need to stick with. And I used this once and could not get past the initial irritation phase where your skin actually kind of becomes red and flaky and sometimes breaks out more before it gets better. Um, and I just couldn't hang with that. But people who use it really say that it works very well for them. But there is this irritation phase that happens at the beginning of it. Um, there you could use that there's also a glycolic acid and salicylic acid. So those can remove the buildup from the, from your pores. Um, I will say that I'm a huge fan of salicylic acid. Um, you can buy it just on its own and it is oil soluble. And so it actually is like an oil when you put it on your skin. Um, but it is oil soluble. So it actually goes inside those pores and can get into the glands themselves. Um, and so salicylic acid is something that you can find in cleansers, but you can also use it to treat like just salicylic on its own. Um, and I'm a big fan of that. Um, it also has some some antibacterial properties, which can, besides unclogging or stopping the congestion, um, can help cut down on bacterial growth. So that's a second part of that. Um, benzoyl peroxide is something that is in a lot of proactive products. Also, um, like Clearosil is a benzoyl peroxide definitive. This was something that some people of my age and parent, you're probably your parents' age, it was kind of the OG of um, acne treatments. Um, it is a, it kills bacteria. Um, so it's an antibacterial. It's not bad like the ones that, well, it's, it's not bad in terms of you have to worry about getting like bacterial resistant because apparently bacteria never become resistant to this. They have it on good authority. So um, it is something that does kill the bacteria, but beware, it will stain, it will bleach out fabric. So any colored fabric that you have, um, you know, you would put it on at night and if you put it on on your skin and your skin touched a colored t-shirt or something or your sheets or pillowcases um, it will ruin anything that it touches so be forewarned on that all right other things cystic and no nodule or at acne or a medical infection you absolutely should have that take like looked at by a doctor um, preferably a dermatologist, there are very, very good oral and topical medications that can fix that. And if it is not fixed, you can have scarring, um, which will be permanent. So it's really important that this is an infection like any other. I know that some people feel like because that it's only cosmetic, but it is not. It is, in fact, like if you had an infection on you know, in your mouth or, you know, in some, you know, on an organ, you would have it taken care of. And for some reason, we feel like acne is something that doesn't need treating like that because it's only cosmetic, but it is not. It is, in fact, a skin infection and it should, you know, something can and should be done about it. Um, so do, in fact, seek out professional help, particularly for cystic and nodular acne. Um, yeah, I think that that's kind of all I have about that one, but it is something that is worth treating. All the other topical things um, you can get over the counter at places like, you know, you can, I'm sure you can buy them online. You can get them at Sephora or Ulta or places like that, um, even probably places like Target um, and Walmart. So those uh, active ingredients are really important. So look at the active ingredients on your cosmetic products, your topical products, um, and hopefully you can get some relief from that. So hopefully this helped you. Um, and there will be questions on the exams about the particular kinds of acne. So look for that.